really interesting, really interesting insight into why it's often working in O and M, but I don't necessarily have that. I find it absolutely fascinating, um, and hopefully it was interesting for you. Um, the next up, we have Daniel Jackson from Cord. You might have noticed Imahem, Felt, and Cord also have a rather big presence at today, which is essentially our own little event. Um, so, um, as they each have a stage, we're very honoured to have them here. And Daniel is going to speak to you about music planning and buying. It's, uh, there's a lot of heavy hitters in the room. There's a lot of people I don't recognise, which I guess is a good thing, because I can just disappear if I screw this up. Uh, my name is Daniel Jackson, I'm the managing director of a company called Cord. Uh, you won't have heard of Cord, because we just relaunched uh, under that name last week. Uh, so how do I come to get here? Uh, I started as a media planner, then I was an advertising planner, then I sold commercial radio for a living. Uh, then I became a sonic branding consultant, uh, ran a record label, uh, worked for a music publisher, was an innovation consultant for a Japanese company called Fujitsu, and then got back into the music business. Uh, and I think this all adds up to exactly the qualification you need to be a music planner and buyer. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that model, and uh, what we think it means, and a little bit about how I think the, uh, the industry is shaping up. So, three things uh, you should know. Uh, and. Uh, you'll enjoy this new technology as much as I do. Three things you should know about the music industry and how we feel it uh, is working today. And I'm talking here about the business to business <coughs> industry because uh, my business and the music planning, buying business, services, advertising, services, brands. So let's not talk about uh, the record industry as a whole. This is B2B music. So things I think you should know. First of all, the music industry uh, I think is underloved by ad agencies. And any ad agency people who stand up and say that uh, music is fantastic, that's, that's easy to say. Uh, in action, it's not, uh, it's not been proved out by my experience. Music tends to be pushed to the back end of the process. Uh, and generally speaking, when you ask a, a, music produ a TV producer or an ad agency whether they like working with the music industry, they, they groan and sigh. Uh, music is not well loved. And we feel a little kicked most of the time. Part of that, but this is a bit of a, a harder measure, is that music is, is undervalued by the ad agency world. Uh, and by brands. And what I mean there is they're not really spending enough money on it. Uh, you think about the average TV spot, the music budget may account for maybe 5%, sometimes 4 5% of the budget. Uh, I don't blame the advertising industry though, I blame the music industry for failing to, uh, to be mature, failing to put in place a proper currency for valuing music, a proper currency for uh, making people understand why music is such an important part of this. To, uh, to, to, to talk about things like uh, synergies and one on one equal, equaling three is, is very well and good, but really in this day and age you need a, a trading currency, you need a real way to measure the value of music. Uh, ad agencies and brands will only start spending the right amount of music when we show them that it's, uh, it's really worth it. And the good news is that uh, the music industry is under reconstruction. So out of the, uh, the kind of rubble of uh, what's gone in the last five years when the music industry lost its uh, revenue model, there are hundreds of entrepreneurs starting up businesses in technology, uh, starting up businesses upstairs, upstairs uh, starting up businesses uh, that are people businesses like music supervision companies, uh, and they're all trying to create a new model for how the, the industry should work. So it's a very positive time for the B two B music industry. Uh, it's just a case of uh, now navigating the waters as we are. all these sharks are out there looking for people's money. So uh, I could hate lots of things. I'm a bit of a hater. Uh, but the three things I really hate about uh, the music industry, B2B sense as it is today, is that most of it is a black box. Uh, there's lots of time, lots of energy, lots of trouble that's gone to, lots of money spent. There is always an outcome, there's always a, a TV spot that gets created, and always, it's a miracle when one of those actually happens with a piece of music everyone's agreed to. Uh, but no one knows what goes on in the middle. Uh, if you can't see a process, then you can't measure it, and if you can't measure it, you can't make it any better. So I hate the fact that this whole thing is a black box. The other part of this is uh, leaving the music choices to the last minute. This is an obvious uh, kind of gripe, obvious thing to hate, nothing new for any of you here. Uh, music is generally a last minute decision. Uh, there may be lots of tracks on the table, but it doesn't get sorted out until a day, two days before the whole thing happens. And this is a, a general metaphor for the friction in the transaction that there is. There are so many people involved, there's so many difficulties in actually making this, this deal happen. Because there's a creative and a commercial deal that has to happen hand in hand at the same time. 
And there's a lot of friction, there's a lot of different people involved, uh, and there's no one set on what the process is, so you just end up with a very hard transaction. Not a pleasurable process. So three things I'm trying to do to make it better. Dave, how am I doing for time? For about six. Six minutes, go on. Yeah. Oh good, four minutes left. Three things I'm trying to do to make it better. Okay, I'll take it quick. I'm trying to gather some understanding of the scale of this business. I mean, we put up a number before a uh, uh, three billion, three point four billion uh, pound business. That's the music industry as a whole. Uh, we think the B2B industry is uh, it's not quite as big as that in this country, but it's pretty large. We've seen uh, over the last uh, year or so about 150 million dollars of ad music spent uh, here and in the U.S. And we're trying to do our DD, our due diligence, sorry, and uh, and make sure we understand. Where's who's spending it? How are they spending it? Where does it go? What kind of values are they getting? So, here's one example. We looked at more than 3,000 ads. We found out that, you can read that for yourself, found out that the people who buy most of the advertising, the, the people who are experienced buyers of music, so that means they understand the creative and the commercial aspect and they buy it lots and lots. They do better deals than people who just jump into the market every so often, don't really know what they're doing. It's a common sense point, but it points to the planning and buying model that you need expertise to really navigate these waters. This doesn't happen overnight. You don't understand the music publishing business until you've been in it for a long time. You don't understand the, the arcane processes of advertising music until you've been in there and felt the pain. There's a lot of experience that's required to get that done. Second thing we're doing to try and make this better is just by sharing some of what we know with some of other people. So that's a part of why I'm up here today. So here's another uh, nice easy chart for anyone who doesn't know. If you spend $100 on an advertising sync, where does that money end up? Uh, who gets it? What is this black box? I mean, you write, you write a license and you sign a check, but where does it turn up? Well, most of the money goes to the writer, uh, the label gets a bit, uh, the publisher gets a bit, the supervisor, the management, the artist, everyone takes their slice. I mean, this is important to know because if you pick up your phone uh, asking for an ad sync and you pick the phone up to, uh, say, artist management, they're going to want a much, much bigger total number because they only get a tiny little percentage of it. Speak to the publisher, you'll probably get a good deal. Uh, Favoured Nation is something that plays in this. And, oh my god, there's so much I can talk about. <laughs> Everyone with me at the moment? Seems yeah. sort of with me. Two minutes left. Uh, so we're trying to get people to understand the planning process in music. So if you get, if you're in this room, you don't understand the role of music across time, territory, media, and touch point for your brand already, then you have failed to plan. Okay? So, I'm going, to, I'm going to say that most of you will not, even if you represent a brand as agency or, or marketing, most of you don't yet have that full understanding of what music's role is across those things. If you get to the point where you have to do something, uh, create a web video, create a TV commercial, create a radio commercial, and you don't have any brand assets to pull on, I know Ruth's assets and equities are things you're going to talk about, if you don't have assets and equities to pull on already, then you have failed to plan. Uh, if you wait until the last minute to create or sync a piece of music, you will waste money. It's as it's it's simple as that. Last thing, something you can do. I'm down to one minute now. So one thing you can do, but I've split into three things. So try and work with people who are trying to make things better. And I'd, I'd include everyone in this room as people who are trying to make this B2B music advertising relationship work better. Uh, try to stay focused on the brand's needs. That's the next that's the real main thing that I like to talk about. This isn't about helping the music industry to survive or giving more money to artists or anything like that. This is about helping brands to shift more product, to, to meet their own uh, objectives. So stay focused on the brand and what it needs, that's the most important thing. And, and just work with people who are, who are connected. So you've got to know the players in the industry in order to get a good deal. You've got to be able to pick up the phone to the publishers and have a, a working relationship with them. That only comes from working with people who are at scale, in the market every day, kind of know what they're doing. And finally, uh, the finally is, uh, I hope most of you are going to hang around this afternoon because there is a fantastic uh, uh, set of uh, stages out there. There's three big stages, some really big sound systems, like uh, proper big, and uh, some seriously good artists. So uh, a lot of time and effort has gone into that, so I hope you're going to stay around and I'll chat to any of you after. Thank you.